Willkommen zum Reinsurance Podcast, live aus Baden-Baden. Wir sind hier für die jährliche Rückversicherungskonferenz, wo sich führende Mitglieder der Branche versammeln, um über die neuesten Trends, Herausforderungen und Innovationen zu sprechen. Bleiben Sie dran für exklusive Einblicke direkt von der Konferenz. Well, welcome Martin and Marek to the Reinsurance Podcast here in Baden-Baden. A privilege to have you on the show, all the way from the Aon Prague office. How are you today? Is, is this sun expected at Baden-Baden? Yeah, actually it's my third trip to Baden-Baden. Yes, yeah, so we are enjoying the weather. It's much better than last year. Definitely. And always, well, as every year, Baden-Baden is perfect. And, and Martin, how are you finding it? Are you a regular here as well? Firstly, thank you for having us here. Uh, and it's for first time for me here, so I'm, yeah, it's first time. So how's your first Baden-Baden going so far? How, how have you found it? And I see it very interesting. You can see the business is running from this and their side, so very interesting event. And, and we know this event is very focused on, on Europe, but you also have to take into account the US. And I'd be curious, how does that affect things from an impact forecasting point of view at Aon? What are you looking at around the world at the moment? Well, um, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, it's Europe-based, but on the other hand, a lot of our insurance uh, people are from US. So mm. we have also amazing change to promote our new US CS model, which mm -hmm. was released uh, last few weeks. And also there is a change to promote other US models which are coming, Florida Law Certification Commission. And so, yeah, so it's not just a Europe base, it's definitely global for us. Very exciting. And I think we, we also have had a lot of experience of events here in Europe. Is that an area of focus for you too, in, in terms of understanding those events better? It was in our scope for last few weeks and also clients coming to our booth in Aon Courthouse and asking for the events from the uh, recent uh, Boris event mm -hmm. which caused a lot of troubles and insurance losses in CE region plus Austria. Yeah, it's, it's been it's been interesting, hasn't it, to see you know Europe events on one hand they're not in the headlines maybe on a global stage as much as as some of the others. Similarly, the uh, the sort of secondary perils in the US like the SCS. That's these great. are really important uh, impacts on results, uh, even though they're not the big headline Hurricane Milton and, and Helene. Yeah. But, yeah. but you follow Hurricane Milton and Helene as well, I, I guess. Yeah, I will return back to the to see flat. Uh, plus Austria, Austria. Uh, yeah, you, you are correct this, that the, the loss was close to 2 billion in euros compared to you know, losses from hurricanes which can be tens of billions uh, USD. Uh, yeah, and we also monitored the, the hurricane Helene and Milton. Uh, mainly we support our clients with our automated event response uh, which basically forecast the, the, the losses before the event uh, the hurricane landfall. Oh, cool! Uh, so, we run it basically on client client's portfolio, but we also provide to our insurance client uh, market loss estimates, which is quite quite useful information, right? Yeah, really interesting. And were you trying to work out for Milton, for example, whether it would go south or north of, of Tampa yeah. Bay and all that? Exactly. Sort of thing. We started yeah. 72 hours before landfall. Yeah. Uh, start to every six hours, we send the update uh, based on the uh, latest weather forecast. And really, it started somewhere very up, and then as the direction of the hurricane went a little bit away from Tampa, uh, the losses, the expected losses, w went much lower than uh, ex than it was expected before. But, but it must have been very reassuring for clients to have a view of it as it was happening and to know how it would affect their portfolios. Yeah. Um, but, you, but you obviously cover quite a lot in your group because we were talking just before the show about earthquakes as well. Yeah, uh, definitely. New earthquake model out there, is that right? Yeah, or? definitely. So our existing vintage is from 2009, 2015. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so we are already working on the development and new models for Europe. So we already started with uh, Turkey. Uh, we already uh, the released uh, Italy and Switzerland last year, yeah. or sorry, this year, already this year. Yeah. And uh, Turkey is coming and we are working on Turkey and then other countries will come up, will follow. And effectively by the half of 2026, we will have the coverage of the new models with exciting secondary perils like landslides and liquefaction for all seismically active countries here in Europe. So that's definitely thrilling news. Yeah, that, that's huge because obviously, you yeah. know, the, the hurricanes steal the headlines a lot. But, yeah. you know, all of these events across Europe have, have been the ones costing money uh, yeah. for insurance companies in, in this region. Absolutely. Brilliant. And so here, here we are at Baden Baden. Presumably, you've been meeting lots of clients and talking with them. What have you been telling them? What have they been asking you? Hmm. What are the main topics? Well, it depends on every client, right? So um, 
Some clients are curious about uh, the recent CEE flood event. Some clients are curious about the automate, automated heat response. And also, uh, well, some clients are curious about the earthquake models which are coming because uh, if we speak about the earthquake, a lot of, lot of earthquakes happened bit from since 2015. So we are trying to also include and let's say pay attention on that. So that's pretty much, yeah, but already yeah. we had a small amount of the events, so it's just half first half of the day. Yeah, and day. maybe I can add that uh, clients are interested also in climate change and how is it incorporated in our yeah. models. Yeah. So we always confirm that it's a topic also for us, not just for insurance and reinsurance companies. Uh, so it's incorporated in our European Windstorm and uh, European SCS model, as well as we are developing for uh, climate change for earthquake, which yeah. that's a ah, funny story. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm interested to hear well, more about that. That's, yeah, many yeah. years ba back we presented that some people thinking that this is a joke, right? Yeah. Climate change and earthquake, how this can go together? But well, if you sp if you, if I mentioned liquefaction as a yeah. one of the secondary peril, liquefaction is a basically soil saturated by water, mm -hmm. right? And if you consider that with the climate change, there will be precipitation in different parts. Of the of the basin or different part of the world, this will definitely cause also, an, let's say, influence uh, the liquefaction. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah. And it's not, not it's not only that. So if you will take the last example of Kanaranmanaş earthquake in Turkey, mm. so there was an amazing amount of the landslides, roughly 1,300 landslides. Mm. And why? Because this is what is happened in February, and the soil was completely saturated, yep. and this was simply sliding down. And that's then you have the similar magnitude event in Morocco. So also hilly region, but nearly no landslides. Yeah. Right? And if you, if you will imagine that, okay, the suddenly Turkey will be without the snow, without the precipitation, so then we can also drop the landslides there. Right, yeah. so this is how the climate change may play a lower role there. That, that's fascinating. I, I had never thought of that before, yep. but it makes complete sense, you know, to include that in the severity yep. aspect. You know, whether whether the the ground shaking causes mm. losses at the end of the day, I guess. Maybe the yeah. most expected changes on this are expected in Southeast Asia region. Yeah, but let's see. So investigation and uh, well, the working on the model is still in progress. So yeah. we just started. Oh, very exciting. And and what's your, your data sourcing like? Do you, do you draw on third-party data? Do you get lots of data from universities and science partnerships? What's, what's the main source of insight for you while you're trying to understand so many different perils and so many different countries and, and bring mm. them together for clients? It depends on every peril, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, with uh, atmospheric perils, we have extensive collaboration with Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, which is nearby. For U.S. perils, we cooperating with the Columbia University. Mm -hmm. That's for U.S. models, and also for uh, for 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 earthquake, we are taking as a primary source of the information the Gem Earthquake Hazard. So, uh, yeah, so we are collaborating with a lot of uh, scientific institutions. Yeah, and I would also add that we all we are collaborating to get also with uh, reinsurance clients and insurance companies. We share the data and insights on our development. Brilliant, and and I can imagine it's it must be exciting to be working at the forefront of the, the future of the industry. I guess you know this is why we exist. I think was said <laughs> at the symposium when we started off to deal with the the shakes and the tremors and yep. unexpected yep. things. So yeah, you you are at the cutting edge, Marek and, and Martin. It's been brilliant having you on the show. Thanks again for coming on, and uh, yeah, good luck with the the remainder of the event. And hopefully we'll see you next year to learn even more about your models and progress thereof. Yep, good. Thanks Thank again. You. Thank you very much.